The auto pen is a machine that John Isaac Hawkins, an Englishman, developed. It was the first auto pen. He received the U.S. patent in 1803. Thomas Jefferson was one of the first to start using the device in 1804 for autograph collecting. Since President Eisenhower, the auto pen machine has been used in most fan requests. Every member of Congress today uses the auto pen. There's over 500 machines in Congress. An auto machine can print up to 3,000 signatures in eight hours. It costs anywhere between $3,000 and $9,000 depending on the model that you choose. Also note that the auto pen machine can sign objects like balls and bats. The autograph machine lasts about 15 years and it uses templates called matrix. The, each matrix lasts about eight months before they have to change it and they cost about $100 each. The auto pen is a machine that can duplicate a signature over and over. A signature is copied onto a template that is inserted into the machine. This mechanism will copy the signature onto an item such as a photo, 3x5 cards, or letters for autograph collecting. You often can tell an auto pen was used by the shakiness of the machine or the stopping and starting of the marker or pen that was used. Another thing to notice in some auto pen signatures is at the beginning and end of every pen stroke you'll notice a period or a blotch like as you can see here in this Wayne Gretzky autograph. There are different kind of auto pen machines today. Sometimes you don't see the, the stopping or the blotch at the beginning of the end. Sometimes you can hardly see any shaking in the signature. But the one thing that's always consistent is it will be identical to other signatures by that person. This is an auto pen that was used by Jimmy Stewart at the end of his life and you can see some blotchy or period like at the beginning and end of his pen stroke. It's not I shaking do. too much no, though, there's, there's a lot of auto pens do. Actually there is no shaking at all on this one. Right, so some auto pen machines don't show shaking. The end, yeah. And the only way you could tell is that there's a bunch of identical ones yeah. that you saw on eBay. I seen them on eBay for sale for $200. Huh. And I even wrote the person and told him. This one here of Billy Joel does show a lot of shape. Yeah. Why some do and some don't, I don't know. Yeah, it must have something to do with, I don't know, the quality of the auto pen machine. Yeah, could be. Well, Jimmy had a good one. Yeah, sure seems like he had a good one. Yeah. But it's no good. They're no good. For an example, and then here's here's an auto pen right here. Tell them about your Hollyfield auto pen. Yeah, this was sold on QVC back in the 90s, I believe, and uh, they sold it for I think $25. Here, hold the autograph up. See if I can zoom in on it. Okay. QVC was selling this, saying it was an authentic signature, and it even says it on the book. It says this certifies. Can you hold, it. It, can you hold it up? Yeah. This certifies that this is an official hand autograph edition of Hollyfield, the Humble Warrior. It says right on there. QVC was selling these, selling these books. And then, right. later on, an article came. The May of 9, 1997 Autograph Times article. Let's see if we can zoom in on the cover. We're not sure that this, this magazine is even around anymore. I don't think it is, but they told, they tell about it, that they even show pictures of the book. It says, and it shows the UBC's Holyfield book signatures found to be fake. <laughs> so UBC sold all these books to thousands of people. It says in there that they're on television, and it says in there that they're auto pen, correct? In 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 the magazine, right, right. It's an auto pen. It says because I I had a pen. few of these books myself, yeah. And I and I noticed even though it says that it's authentic, I noticed that they're exact same. Yeah, they're the same. That's how you know. Because I remember exactly I, I remember pointing that they out to a few exactly people that nobody could draw their signature the exact same. Yeah, all the time. That's one of the ways that you could spot a right. If you, if you have two of them. Otherwise, it's sometimes it's very difficult. Another right. auto pen example you've got. That we sent through the mail is the It Takes a Village by Hillary Clinton. 
See if I can zoom in on it. Okay. And uh, and in, and inside inside is where they gave you the signature. Yeah, they they put that in a machine. And the way to prove that it's an auto pen is that it's an exact copy of other autographs she sends in the mail. I don't know if you're able to tell in the video by looking close, but there is shaking this in the pen stroke. With some auto pen signatures, the only way you can tell is that there are multiple exact examples out there. Plus, I, I seen a few on eBay and that the people were selling for two, three hundred dollars at the time when she was running for president, and they all were identical. What's the first thing that, that, that we would do to determine whether an autograph was real or fake? I'd go to my research books. Okay. And right. check out what it's supposed to look like. What it's supposed to look like. Right. And, and, and uh, they call that a facsimile. Facsimile is in-person autographs. That's what they are, they're in-person. Right, because then you know that they weren't done by a secretary and you right. can compare the difference. Exactly. Here are some sources that you can find some authentic examples. This is the Autograph Collector book. This is an excellent way, StarTiger.com, to keep up with the autograph community as to what celebrities are using secretaries, what celebrities are using auto pens. There are thousands of addresses on this site. You can choose a celebrity, and look him up and find out if he's signing. You can find out if he's using secretarial or auto pens. And there are people that will also submit in-person signatures to help you compare. There's also the Autograph Collector magazine, which comes out monthly and has excellent authentic examples of signatures in every issue, along with some addresses. And often good articles telling what celebrities using auto pens and secretarial signatures. How you can tell that it's pre-printed? The, the easy way is, is with the glare. You get a glare in the light. Right. Take take a look at some of the glares that we're going to show you here. I get the glare. Now, notice the autograph. How it comes, it comes across his dark shirt or sweater, and it obviously goes in there. Now, with the naked eye, I could see that there's a little. I, I could actually see the the marker on his sweater because it's a little different shade than the sweater itself. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. But what the camera should pick up is the glare of the marker. And it's not because this signature is actually in the photo. See, if you look on his sweater area, you should see that marker glaring on top of the on top of the photo, but it's in the photo. Let me get let me let me give you a better look by taking a marker such as a black sharpie and drawing a line on there from the right into the dark. Now watch how that mark how that line should show a glare. There, maybe the camera can see that. Can you see that? The line coming down where it's on top of the dark. That's because it's on top of the glare, it's on top of the photo. As we know, we just put it there. Whereas the other one, the fake one, is in the photo. And you can't see the fake one, even though it's thicker and darker. You can't see it. Let's try putting a blue next to it. And better yet, let's try to make it real thick so that we can see it. Real thick. Maybe that'll show a better glare in the video. That's much better. You can clearly see that the marker is glaring on top of the photo. You could tell it's not in the photo. As you look at many signed glossy photos, you'll see that 
it's very easy to see a marker glaring on top of a photo. Sometimes it's a fine tip marker and it's hard to see and there's other types of pens and markers that you ain't really sure are glaring on top of the photo and also there are very many other types of surfaces that the signature might be on that ain't glossy. If the surface is not glossy you probably won't be able to tell if the marker or the pen is on the surface of the picture or if it's just printed into the picture. In that case you'll need to use the techniques that we will learn about in the second portion of this video using a microscope or a very good magnifying glass. Here we're looking at a Stan Usual photo where the words best wishes Stan Usual are actually in the photo but somebody then later underlined Stan Usual with a pen and also wrote the words to Gary above best wishes. It's a little bit more difficult in this one to tell because it's a semi-gloss but if the video can pick it up you can tell that the words to Gary is glaring or shining at you also you can tell that it's indentated into the paper unlike the best wishes and Stan Musial and the same for the underline somebody drew underline under the words st name Stan Musial we will also take a closer look at this at the second portion of this video indentations we have uh, this signature right here of uh, Heather Locklear that it does appear as if it's on the photo we're not really sure. We discussed it earlier as to what type of machine they used. It doesn't seem like a stamp, but it's very indentated and it's evenly indentated throughout. Yeah. Even the Caution. even the dot on the word wishes yeah. is indentated. Yeah. The signer would have to have been going like that and and stopping with every single letter at the same exact point with the same exact pressure, which indicates that it was done by a machine, not by a person. And if you take a closer look, we can show you the indentations. If you look real close, you'll see that there's it's indentated into the paper, into the photo itself. The problem being it's indentated the same throughout the entire autograph. I'm not really sure what type of machine they used, if it's a, if it be considered a stamp or or what it is, but it's something that was pushed into the photo causing it, in, causing it to be indentated throughout. Even the dotting of the eye, if you look, if you could see the indentation. Difficult again to tell on the video, but you could really see it with the naked eye if you look up close, how it's indentated throughout the entire autograph. How do you know it's a secretarial signature? Well, it would pass all the tests. It would pass your it would pass your test of that it's on the picture, not in the picture. It would it would it would pass it would pass a test that it's that it's um, not an auto pen because it's not the exact same as other signatures. But the, the only test that it would fail in is does it look like the person's signature? And how would you know if it's their signature? The that, books. That's these, with, with the these books, books that show their show. facsimiles. Yeah. Uh, or startiger.com. And another good way is, uh, although none of none of them, not even the books, are 100%. No, they're not. But another good way is to go on eBay. Everybody pretty much has a computer. And yeah. type in somebody's name. I want to know what Johnny Cash signature looks like. You type in Johnny Cash, autograph, PSA, DNA, and you're at least going to see the opinion of experts right. saying that this appears real to them. Right. And we've also found out that PSA, DNA aren't 100% either. Everybody's, we're human. We're all human. <laughs> right. And right. they're not all right either. And we'll, and, and we'll show you some of the PSA, DNA things that we don't think are real and why later in the video. Um, JSA is the same same story. I guess that was James Spencer of yeah. Dentistry. He worked for PSA DNA and branched off and made his own company. James Spencer. But they are good they are good for that reason because you at least are getting some kind of some kind of professional opinion. Right. 
and and um, it's helping the hobby and it's a step in the right direction. Secretarial signatures were on. There's so many to show. Here's one of O.J. Simpson. You gotta check out some people don't think he's a very nice guy. And anyway, in this in this case in this case he uh, he wasn't a very nice guy because well. his signatures weren't done by him, but he was making you think they were. Yeah. The O, if you can see it, the O is very um, circular, whereas in the real autograph, it almost looks like a P on most of them. Yeah, it does look like a P. The J is even different in the real one, where it's not so fancy. It's kind of just like a straight-up J. Yeah. And the S is always, as far as I've seen, connected. Connected to the I. And connected, it's, a, it's, it's a different to S, too. Eye. It's a totally and the, different. And the end sometimes is a little quicker, and not yeah. so you don't see any letters sometimes on the. It's on basically the, the O, the J, and the S. Right, that's, are, that's, are all very different. Yeah. And, and these uh, are, you only get through the mail, only. Right. In these person, these, you ones, never get these like ones came through the mail. Never seen one in person. We got them a lot of times in person. Here, here's a few real ones. Yeah. This is this is one secretarial, and the, and the reason that you found out these were secretarials was from the autograph collector magazine, right. correct? Yeah, there's an article. Okay. That's one of the secretarials that we found out in the autograph collector magazine, right? Yeah. Wow. So, okay, so these are two known secretary signatures that we just saw. And here's a, here's a look at the real autograph. And you can see a detailed article with many examples of his autograph in the October 2004 issue of the Autograph Collector magazine. There's a good article in the December 2005 issue of Autograph Collector magazine about how many people think Jamie Lee Curtis had her mother signing her mail. Here's a look at an authentic in-person signature, and above it, you'll see a through-the-mail signature. Here is a look at a Clint Eastwood secretarial signature, and here is a look at a Clint Eastwood in-person signature. If you look at the two signatures closely, you'll see that the secretarial signature has more of a neat handwriting. Also, one of the key differences is the last letter in the signature, the D. The D in the secretarial signature doesn't come up very high. It almost looks like he's just writing a Y or a G. Whereas in the authentic signature, the D usually comes up very tall as much as the other letters and will form a loop on its way down. So the two key things to look for in a Clint Eastwood signature is that the authentic signature is usually more crowded the letters, more sloppily looking written, and the D is usually tall and forms a loop at the end of his name. Here we see some authentic in-person Jack Lemon signatures. And this is a look at some secretarial signatures that came through the mail. If you take a look at them both at the same time, you'll see the Jack Lemon on top, which is the secretarial lemon, has a short line across the J whereas the authentic lemon below you'll see the line of the J goes as long as the whole word Jack. That is the case with a lot of Jack lemon signatures. Also a key thing to look at is the A in Jack. The A in the authentic Jacks are sort of drawn backwards whereas the secretarial Jack is more of a common A in Jack. Also the E in lemon are drawn backwards in the authentic signatures. His signature, it, it appears as if, we were, we were talking about earlier, his signature appears as if it was done by a right-handed person because it's all slanting the that, proper way. That's written by a right-hander. And you can even see 
in this real autograph on the other on the other we got on the other side. The these are different, everything. And he's holding the pen in his left hand. Yeah, he's a lefty. <laughs> That's funny. And so his his signature typically, and sometimes a lot more than others. This one isn't so much, but typically will slant straight up or the opposite way. His yeah. handwriting. Here we see an authentic Jerry Lewis signed book where we can see Jerry ends his J in a line that runs left to right into the ERR. -R. Also he almost always starts his E at the bottom. Here is the secretary signature where she usually is coming downward in the J and seldom starts the E at the bottom. Here we see she actually starts the E at the top. Here we see the secretarial signature above the authentic autograph where you can clearly see the difference in the J and the E. Here are some more authentic examples where he seemed to stay very consistent through the years with the J ending in the movement towards the right and the E starting at the bottom. His secretarial signature becomes very easy to recognize when you know what to look for. Here we take a look at Debbie Reynolds, and this autograph is an excellent example of her secretary. And the key things to look for in the secretary's signature is the S at the end, where she seems to always form it, and the letter O in Reynolds, where it is shorter than the N and much shorter than the L. In every in-person signature I have ever seen, she never completes the S at the end of her signature and the O is always taller or at least equal to the N. Also the L is usually on the shorter side as well. Again, when you know what to look for, it's relatively easy to spot the difference between the secretarial signatures and the authentic signatures. One good tool to help aid in authenticating autographs is to compare inscriptions because usually the secretary is unable to copy the celebrity's handwriting of the many possible names it could be inscribed to. Here we see an authentic in-person autograph of Charlton Heston, but in his case his secretary seldom to never attempted personalizing through the mail. So the things to look for in an authentic Hessen signature is that his autograph is much longer in total length than the secretary when the comparison of the height first width is measured. Also in the name Charlton, if you look at all his in-person signatures, he very clearly writes the letter R and the letter R is always much shorter than the letter L and seldom to never will Charlton loop the R as if a short L. But in his secretary's signature, that's exactly what the secretary will do. She makes the R look so much like the L that sometimes it is identical to the L and looks like she is writing Charlton. Stamps. Oh yeah, stamps too. Mm -hmm. but they're they're also identical. Right. Yeah. If you do send things away, try to send in twos, and if they bring them back, always check. Minnesota Fats love to use the stamp. Even on a talk show, I once seen him.
where he brought his stamp out and explained how it was his famous stamp and nobody could ever duplicate or copy it and therefore it was much better than his actual autograph. He would stamp things in person, he would stamp things everywhere. I wrote to him on numerous occasions trying to get him and plead with him to give me an actual autograph so that I can compare it to the stamp and I gave him many reasons and excuses. Finally one day he did send me back an actual autograph. The thing I found most amusing about the actual autograph was I could clearly see the two Rick above was the same handwriting that he put above all of his stamps which lends merit to the fact that he was present every time he stamped my autograph which proves that he may have actually thought his stamp was more sought after than his actual autograph yet somehow I feel as if I was hustled by Minnesota fans. We also know that this Robert Redford is not authentic because we have many exact copies he sent us of this as well. Yeah. Here's a Babe Ruth autograph check. Nice check, huh? <laughs> Signature looks good. 3,000 bucks? Yeah, I think that's what they saw. What do you think? Alright. So what's wrong with that check? It's a copy in, a, in your, your copy machine. Yeah. Look at the back. Blank. There's no it's nothing. Blank. It's just a piece of paper. So beware if somebody tries Frank, to sell you. Matting that up with something, putting it behind glass. Right, something like this, like a Ruther. And they could have the edges all covered oh, and yeah. you don't see the back of the check. Exactly. Sometimes it's sometimes oh. difficult. Yeah, my finger down here. If you look real close, this, none of the signatures go into the white. The edge. Even, even Fran Dresser, one of the stars, probably the star of the show, I don't know if it shows, part of her signature on the top of the photo doesn't go into the white. It gets cut off. Oh, yeah, so you know. So you don't even have to really put give it the, the, the light test to see if it shines in the light or anything because you, you can tell that it's, it's fake just by the fact that the signatures are cut off by the yeah. border of the photo. Yeah. These, these right here are identical so you know they're fake they're just printed sometimes pre sometimes the pre-printed ones are a little difficult at first unless you get a copy unless you get another just one. like the auto pencils yeah. there's some real good pre-printed stuff real good stamp stuff sometimes yeah it takes a lot it takes research forgeries are autographs that are bad a forgery is a signature that somebody writes to intentionally make you think it belongs to another person. Here is an O.J. Simpson forgery. It's completely inconsistent with the known in-person signatures that are shown earlier in this video. I can publicly claim this as a forgery because I myself did it. A bad day autograph is a good autograph that looks bad. Here are some authentic Joe Namath autographs. Notice the consistency at which he wrote his name. They're all very similar. This Joe Namath I obtained in Niagara Falls. As you can tell, it's very consistent with the previous ones. Take a close look at this autograph. It seems to have no consistencies with all the other Joe Namath signatures. Yet, if you believe this signature to be a forgery, you would be wrong. I obtained this signature on the day he was inducted into the Football Hall of Fame. And I guess you can call it a bad day. I'm not sure what he was thinking when he signed this. The good thing about auto pen signatures is it usually gives you a good idea what the signature should look like. Here are some Muhammad Ali signatures that I obtained in person. As you can see, they do look similar to the auto pen signature, but all slightly different. This Muhammad Ali autograph was from one of his last autograph show appearances. Muhammad Ali was signing all his signatures very small and I was worried that it wouldn't look good on my large poster. So I asked him if he could sign it large on my poster and he graciously did try but it was very difficult for him and his hand kept stopping and starting making it appear as if it was a forged autograph. Also the A in Ali seems very abnormal. He also put the dot on the I in Ali, which he very unusually does. And in the M in Muhammad, if you look at the middle line, 
it comes all the way down almost equal to the first line and last line in Muhammad which he almost never does in his authentic signatures but because he was forcing it to be large that's what caused that uncharacteristic look here are some other bad day in-person signatures of Muhammad Ali these signatures would have a very low resale value and could only be sold based on the trust of the dealer himself there are many reasons for a celebrity to have a bad day and unfortunately in today's autograph world there is little difference between a bad day and a forged autograph they both will show some or many inconsistencies from the person's actual autograph it is this reason we should never accuse a person of selling forged or fake autographs this could bring slander or harassment charges against you the basic rules when buying an autograph never buy an autograph if you feel uncomfortable about it an autograph may have inconsistencies a lot or just some which might make you think it's a fake but as we now know it just might be a bad day autograph number two is get to know the person you're buying from which we will talk a lot more in the second part where we get more in depth and detail number three always save your receipts and COAs we'll talk about the COAs good ones and bad ones and what to look for with that in the detail of the second part of this video as well and number four learn some basics on how to tell if it's a real autograph up to this point of the video we have shown the basics on how to spot an auto pen how to spot a preprint autograph and we have shown you some sources where you can find some authentic in-person examples to help show if your autograph has inconsistencies or is secretarily done